Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today for the One Cape Virtual Learning Series. Today's discussion and Q&A is about streets and infrastructure. Our presenters include Ward 6 Representative Stacy Kinder and Public Works Director Stan Polovic. Feel free to drop up any questions you have in the Facebook comments or the Zoom chat or Q&A and we'll read those um, at the end. We turn the program now to our presenters. Councilwoman, you first, ma'am. All right, well, thanks, Nicolette. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks uh, for setting this up and I'm glad um, this is a, a chance for people who uh, might be able to tune in and hear a little bit more about our streets and infrastructure. Um, the uh, Those two big issues are, are ones that every one of us deals with every day if we leave our house at all. Um, and I'll, actually, if we stay in our house, we deal with some of these issues. It's all dealt with um, by the, the Public Works Department, in addition to our Development Services Department. But our Public Works Department handles the bulk of, of all that we're going to be talking about. Um, and it covers everything from street development and maintenance, um, our entire city fleet of vehicles and equipment, um, stormwater maintenance, the levee system, which thankfully um, we don't have to think about too often, but it's uh, every day very important to us here in Cape Girardeau, um, wastewater, trash recycling water. So all of these things uh, play a huge role in our everyday lives. Um, thankfully, again, if everything's working and clicking along, you don't have to worry about it too much. You turn on your faucet and you flush your toilet and you move about your day. Um, regarding the, the city council um, and as uh, my involvement as a city council member, um, I do want to point out just that uh, the city of Cape has very qualified professionals that head these departments, um, especially our director here, Mr. Stan. Um, so the city council is not involved in the, um, the daily workings, the fine details of these departments and, and what's going on. Uh, there. Uh, where the city council is involved um, is very generally um, a couple things. Um, we approve our annual budget for the city, um, which includes all of these items, um, the maintenance, the equipment, um, the staff people involved. Um, we also um, approve different funding plans and initiatives, and some of those end up um, going before the public for a vote um, to very uh, you know, probably well-known examples would be um, the, the TTF-6 um, initiative that was approved last year, uh, the Transportation Trust Fund um, that we've done numerous, well, six times now in the city of Cape Girardeau, um, which um, uh, covers many different street projects um, every, every five years or so uh, that deal with um, not only maintenance, but also new projects for the city. Um, and then PRS-2. Um, PRS stands for Parks and Rec, and the S is very important. It's stormwater, um, which again, we don't think of too much. We, um, with the PRS2 vote, um, which was approved also recently, um, kind of the things that capture our attention generally are the, are the things that are covered in the Parks and Rec Department. Those are the fun things that we get to use and go out and do. But the S, the stormwater, um, is extremely important for Cape Girardeau. Um, uh, as we'll talk about further, Stan will be able to get, go into a lot of those details of, of what's covered there. But um, obviously, if you've been around Cape uh, very often or very much, you, you know that uh, water issues are, are a big part of everyday life, especially for the public works department. Um, and I would just add that the third thing generally that the, the city council uh, is involved with regarding all these issues is just helping the community connect um, to the right people uh, to get questions answered, um, to get issues resolved, because of course things do come up. Um, and so uh, sometimes it's just a matter of, of helping uh, find the right person to talk to or, or that sort of thing. So um, that's a very general overview of, of what's going on in our city. And I will now turn it over to Mr. Polovic, uh, who can give us much more professional detail. <laughs> very good, thank you. Uh, as you said, the, the Public Works Department, uh, uh, when people speak of infrastructure, uh, most all, everything that falls under that umbrella is managed by the Public Works Group. Uh, most of our residents and, and uh, community people don't think about all of that necessarily, but it does fall under our umbrella, uh, which includes the Streets Division, uh, Stormwater, Solid Waste, Water, Wastewater, uh, which includes the collection and the treatment. Water includes the treatment and then the distribution for the users. 
And then our fleet maintenance division is also part of that, uh, a very important part of that to keep all the equipment working. And uh, I thought I might briefly go through some of the things we do in, in each of those areas uh, that impact our community every day uh, in one form or another, sometimes in many, many forms. Uh, next slide, Nicolette, if you would. Uh, the, uh, the streets division uh, certainly gets the most uh, attention, I think, from our, our public. Uh, they're driving on it uh, as they see issues with the roadway pavement conditions, as they see uh, are complaining that they're sitting at the traffic signal too long. Uh, we understand all of that in our streets division, our traffic division are very involved in those things. Uh, people may not realize our streets division also is involved in relief removal uh, as well as, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, next slide, if you would, Nicolette, the, the repair group. Here's a picture of our group doing some concrete street repairs. Uh, obviously, that's a very important part of what we do uh, within the department. The next slide uh, shows our pothole truck, which is also involved in pavement repair. Uh, we're able to use this truck about six months out of the year. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that that I won't bore you with, but uh, the other six months we just use coal mix, which isn't nearly as good, but it's the best available for the winter months. Uh, we use this truck usually from April through October, uh, and, and it does a much better uh, long lasting patch. Uh, then we move on, our, our leaf uh, service is also through our streets department. This is a picture of our one man operation for the leaf truck. Coincidentally, the guy that drives this truck in the winter also drives the pothole truck in the summer. Um, so he's he's got two six month assignments to do every year. Uh, this division also takes care of all the street lights in town. Uh, there are some 3,500, 3,300 street lights in the city. Most of them are owned and operated by Emory. Uh, People might find it interesting to know that our electric bill just for street lights is about $480,000 a year. Uh, so no small matter for us to deal with. Uh, the next slide shows something that's on our minds right now, uh, winter weather response. Uh, we had an event, a small event Saturday night. We've got some more coming this week, uh, but our streets division is also the, the primary response group uh, for dealing with snow and ice events. Uh, the, probably the next division that gets the most uh, notoriety from our residents is the stormwater group. Uh, we get recognition when things don't go well, when there are big rains. Uh, this group is obviously in charge of making sure things work as well as they can. Uh, this group is also in charge of the riverfront and flood wall levy system, uh, which most people think is uh, the wall is there so that we can paint the murals on them. Uh, the wall is there to protect for floods. The murals happen to be a nice coincidental benefit. Uh, but this group manages all of that. Uh, we also manage the uh, LaSalle Dam uh, in the detention area, uh, which is very little, uh, not known much at all among the residents of the city because this is located way out in the northwest part of the northwest of the city limits. But you can see the area there where the brown water is, that's about a hundred acre detention area, which helps protect uh, the city of Cape and most specifically downtown, uh, the, the, the Kingsway Highway, Kings Highway Corridor area is greatly benefited by this uh, that was built in the, the early nineties. Uh, the next slide shows what we're, we experience from time to time. Uh, so we're trying to go from this and the next slide shows what we're trying to get to that's the same location and about the same size rain event. You can see here with the new bridge, we're actually able to keep all the water in the channel as opposed to going all over the place. Um, yeah, so big improvement there. Uh, that's, uh, so that was specifically a PRS1 project and there are about 20 more of those to be done in PRS2. So we're excited that we're continuing to make that great, those types of improvements around town. Uh, the next division I'll mention quickly is our solid waste division. Uh, obviously this affects our, we provide this service to our residents daily, uh, whether it's uh, trash or recycling. Uh, everybody gets one trash pickup and one recycling pickup a week. 
Uh, that amounts to about, uh, I think we have 9,900 trash customers. About half of those participate in recycling. So our guys are, are picking up a, a lot of material uh, through the course of the, uh, uh, the week. Uh, I believe it's something on the order of 300,000 pounds of trash and about 80,000 pounds of recycling on a weekly basis. Uh, that we pick up at the curb and then process through our transfer station, which I think is the next slide, Nicolette. And if uh, that's where all of our trash goes, that's our transfer station that went into service in 2016. Uh, very proud of that facility. We actually handle all our trash and recycling. We also receive trash and recycling from quite a number of commercial haulers, as well as individuals. Uh, and then all of that is collected and sent to the landfill over at Dexter. Uh, next, I'll speak briefly about our water division. Uh, they are in charge of treating the, the well water that we use for our, our water system and then get that out distributed to the, the users in town. Uh, the water division, uh, our average daily usage is about five and a half million gallons a day. This is a picture of our water plant. Uh, we're able to produce about seven and a half million gallons a day of drinking water. So our Capacity is, is above our demand, which is always a good thing to have. We also have about eight and a half million gallons of, I'm sorry, six and a half million gallons of elevated storage around town in eight different tanks uh, that helps supply the water uh, on a needed basis. Uh, the next group I would mention is our wastewater division, which includes our sewer collection system and our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the, the sewer collection system consists of about 200 miles of pipe, uh, about 5,000 manholes, uh, when our guys are in charge of maintaining that and making sure it works properly. Uh, then all of the wastewater that's collected from town goes to our wastewater plant, which you see here in the picture. Uh, that's our new facility that went online in 2014. Uh, we're very proud of that, about $56 million investment here in the community. Uh, should serve the community for another 30 years, uh, which we're excited about. And, and it does a very, very good job. Uh, we treat about 42 million gallons of wastewater through this facility every week. That runs to about 5 million gallons a day. Uh, and, and we're very proud of our staff. We're also able to make class A biosolids uh, from the sludge that goes through our facility. We're one of two or three facilities in the state that can do that. And so we're, uh, we're continuing to expand that process and hopefully we'll be able to sell that fertilizer for a nominal amount of money. Uh, and, uh, the biosolids are fertilizer, so we're, we're excited to be going to that part. Lastly, I would mention our fleet division. Uh, they maintain about a thousand pieces of equipment around the city. Uh, the only thing we don't work on, uh, the next slide points this out, we do on, we work on everything from lawn mowers to trash trucks. Uh, the one thing we don't work on is fire engines. So those guys take care of that themselves and through their specialized vendors. But everything else, all the cop cars, all of the dump trucks and pickup trucks and things uh, we maintain through our fleet services. They do about 3,000 repairs a year uh, with the six guys that we have on staff there. So they're very busy uh, most days. And lastly, I would summarize by saying that every day uh, that the City of Cape Public Works Department has a whole lot going on. And I'll be glad to answer any questions that y'all may have or that the listeners may have. Yeah, just a reminder to everybody uh, watching, they can go ahead and drop questions in the Zoom chat, Zoom Q&A, or right there on Facebook comments. I don't see any new ones rolling in yet. Um, but we did have a few submitted in advance. Um, uh, first one was for Councilwoman uh, Kinder. What types of questions do you typically get um, from residents uh, of Ward 6 or the community? Any questions, comments, or concerns that you typically get as a council? Yeah, there, um, a good number um, regarding all these, all these issues. Um, and they mostly fall into one of two categories. Um, one would be stormwater issues. Um, people don't really call them stormwater, but water, you know, there's water where it shouldn't be, they think. Um, and then, um, you know, just road repair stuff. Um, everyone's, you know, uh, it's easy to notice, you know, if there's a pothole that you hit, you know, coming out of your driveway every day. So that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but the stormwater issues are, are um, 
I have, I have found them to be very interesting. Um, it's been a real education for me <laughs> being a council member. Um, I, uh, I, I can think of three or four um, issues that people have contacted me about that have, uh, I've, you know, sent a, a question or email to, uh, to Stan here and all of a sudden, you know, it becomes a, a two hour sit down meeting <laughs> because the, because the issue is so complicated. Um, and you know, I've I've found um, I'll say this: uh, not everything is able to be resolved uh, in the way that that perhaps a property owner um, might prefer it to be. But um, but there's always been an answer um, as to why the city does do something a certain way or why it doesn't do something a certain way. Um, and I, so I've been very um, I've been very encouraged to to hear that. Um, Stan, I just, I'm, I'm tooting your horn for you. So, um, but it's, it's, yeah, there's some complicated stuff and we can, we can delve into some, you know, specifics if you want to. Um, but then the, the road issues are of course, another one, anyone who's out going anywhere, you know, is going to have some questions about, about road issues. Um, you know, in general, uh, we've got good, um, plans in place. Of course, as I mentioned before, the, the TTF plan um, is a, you know, starting here for I think five or six years, uh, there's a there's a huge, um, many, many millions of dollar plan put together to, to uh, um, do specific, you know, repair specific areas, um, develop, you know, put new new projects in. Um, but then on a daily basis, um, you know, we've got the, the pothole machine coming out and fixing things and um, sometimes whole panels of concrete need to be replaced. Um, uh, sometimes things break, you know, roads break down faster than, than the plan, you know, thinks they will. And so that has to be addressed. But but those two those two issues are the, are the big thing that I've seen. Following up on that, uh, Stan, uh, regarding stormwater, I know, um, and I, I get, you know, comments and concerns from property owners sometime online too. We have found that the nature of the concerns with stormwater has changed a lot over the years, um, going from more global, if you will, stormwater flooding issues to more of that neighborhood level, uh, mm -hmm. property level issues. Could you speak to how that's changed over yes, time? Yes, um, uh, in fact, the, the city has been, uh, uh, blessed immensely uh, with the uh, completion of the flood wall system downtown along the riverfront, uh, which was completed in the early 60s for those that aren't familiar with that history. Prior to 1958, none of that was there and downtown was subject to whatever level the river was. That's what the river level was in those buildings. And um, uh, so the, the advent of the levee districts and getting the flood wall built was a tremendous asset to the city, uh, which has limited our impacts from the flooding uh, through the late 90s with the, the floods that impacted areas, particularly the Red Star area and the Smelterville area. Uh, the buyout programs through FEMA uh, removed a lot of those structures so that now even at near record levels, the river really isn't impacting that many properties. And so we've been the beneficiary of a lot of improvements through the Corps of Engineers and local sponsorship uh, that has greatly uh, reduced the, the impact of river flooding in the city. Uh, likewise, the LaSalle Dam that I pointed out earlier in that basin, along with the improvements to Cape LaCroix Creek and the Walker Branch, those are the two big concrete channels along Kings Highway through downtown or the central part of town. Uh, those improvements were put in in the early 90s and have greatly reduced the impact of big storm events flooding downtown. Uh, the people that were uh, living here in the mid 80s probably remember a major flood in 86, I believe. That, that flooded Town Square, downtown on Kings Highway in William, Independence area. Uh, and I believe two people actually drowned in that flood. Uh, following that event, uh, the city was able to leverage and, and get some core money to do those improvements, which have greatly reduced the amount of wide, widespread flooding in town, which brings us to now we're dealing with the localized neighborhood uh, element of flooding. program uh, will continue our efforts to make some improvements in specific neighborhoods. 
Uh, the PRF-1 program that was completed a couple of years ago addressed some of that as well. Um, and so we're looking forward to getting more improvement, but those improvements, um, thankfully, are focused on localized neighborhood areas rather than, uh, you know, 100 acre areas around the city. And in most of the water getting in people's homes. And if I could, can I add one thing to that, Stan? Sure. Um, just uh, regarding the, the, the questions that I get or the concerns from people, um, it's it it seems to be more of the specific uh, water that's ending up on someone's property, and and sometimes that's due to you know what the next door neighbor is doing on their property. Um, everybody generally uh, generally tries to direct the water, you know through their off their property <laughs> and and unless you're um, surrounded by fields on all sides you're, you're going to have a neighbor you know that that might be the recipient um, and so that's been uh, for me that's been some of the more uh, complicated issues that people have asked about is where you um, you know you get you get people building up on their property or diverting water and and of course it's you know ending up in the neighbor's yard and and you know they want the city to do something about it um, and the city, our, our city doesn't uh, get into those issues um, for a lot of good reasons, actually. Um, I've, I've discovered that. Um, so, but anyway, it, it, it's complicated. Stormwater sure. is, is not nearly as simple as some people might want to believe, particularly yeah. when it comes to individual parcels of land. Yeah. Uh, because state law nor local code uh, really uh, direct us to manage water on a specific piece of ground. We will look at it in a watershed basis. We'll look at it for a new development, whether that's a commercial development or a residential subdivision. And we'll look at how the stormwater is going to be transported within that development. Uh, but we don't get into the details of telling people how to drain their individual lots, which often leads to the complications that you're talking about always a lot more to stormwater. Uh, the councilwoman also touched on um, street repair concerns, those types of items. Stan, I have found that a lot of the um, concerns or just questions maybe that some folks have are about streets inside a town, but they're not all city maintained streets. Could you speak to that, Stan? Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, and, and it is true. Uh, even though there are quite a number of roadways within the city limits of Cape, uh, much of that is uh, managed by uh, other entities. Uh, the city has the majority of those roadways, most of the neighborhoods and, uh, and the bigger roads such as Mount Auburn, Independence, most of William, but not all of it, uh, are city maintained. But the Missouri Highway Department is responsible for maintaining all of Kings Highway, William from Kings Highway West, which means all the area out by the interstate interchange, uh, as well as Highway 74 through the southern part of town. Uh, so they they maintain uh, quite a bit of roadway that our customers, our citizens are using. Uh, and they are also responsible for the traffic signals on those roadways, uh, which the city runs about 22 signals in town. MoDOT has about that many as well on their roadways. And then lastly, there's also a Cape Special Road District uh, they own and maintain uh, several roadways in the northwestern part of town. Um, and so when someone calls in about a problem on a specific roadway, uh, we may end up informing them that that's not city maintained. It's either MoDOT maintained or Cape Special, and we can refer them to the proper people. Uh, but just because the roadway's in the city limits doesn't mean that the city's the maintenance responsibility for it. And when we do have an issue on a city roadway, what should a citizen's expectation be upon reporting a roadway issue? Uh, probably expect us to do a short-term patch fairly quickly. That could be the pothole truck. Councilwoman, I think we have lost Stan. Oh, have yeah. you also lost Stan from your view? I, I don't see him around here either. He's gone. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, um, I'll, we'll see if Stan uh, pops back on, but I think where he was going is that um, uh, residents and folks can always report street issues on our, our website when it is up um, or give us a call at 573-339-6351 or however they want to, to contact staff and just let folks know that they want to report an issue. They will fix it fairly quickly, but often it is a temporary patch that works for whatever the temperature or the season that we might be in. Um, just to uh, just to allay that hazard for the time being, and then it'll be put on a list that as funding becomes available to do a, a proper longer lasting uh, repair. Um, I don't see any other questions on Facebook or in Zoom. So Councilwoman, thank you for being with us today. Um, Stan, wherever you've gone, we hope you're safe out there. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Those of you watching online, again, thank you for being with us today. If you have any questions or anything um, pops up, feel free to contact us. Um, we're available at 339-6320 or just email us at news at cityofcape.org. Um, we try to do these online events opposite council meetings. Um, our next one is February 22nd at 1 p.m. We're gonna talk about neighborhoods with the city's police and planning departments and Ward 1 Councilman and Red Star Neighborhood Group Leader Dan Presson. That's all we had for today, folks. We hope you have a great one. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks. Bye-bye.